comes up It's a new day dawning It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy
Good morning, disciples. Welcome to worship. Just a few announcements as we get started today. If you would just take a second, just takes a quick second to like this service. Hit the like button on Facebook or on YouTube. Also, if you are watching on Facebook, if you would feel so inclined to share, just hit the share button at the bottom of the page. Let your friends see that you're worshiping with us today. That would be awesome. Also, would like to let you know if you if you want to download a bulletin to follow along with today's service, you can go to our website, fccmanhattan.org, click on the worship tab, and then streaming services. You will see that there. Also, on the worship tab, you will see a section for mobile giving. So, uh, whether now or later on in the day, if you would be so inclined to give of your tithes and offerings in that form. Um, it's really easy. You can also download the Easy Tithe app and uh, find us on that. Or one other way for those who are adventurous, you can text the word GIVE to the phone number on the screen, 785-504-1191. And this is also connected to our Easy Tithe. So really easy, um, as the name suggests. Thank you for your generosity. Uh, today's service, we're going to have some special Dixieland music, so a little different than normal Sundays, but no less special, and so I hope you enjoy what our musicians put together for us today as we worship together. And now, uh, let us continue on in this order of service on this, the first Sunday of September 2020. O oh God, may our soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to God, the source, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forevermore. Amen. Welcome to this set-apart time that we dedicate to hearing from the risen Christ, to be led into truth and into light. May your heart receive God's love in a fresh way today. And as you receive from God, I pray that by the end of this service, you would be led out into wonderful things making this world a beautiful place with your service to Christ. Would you join me in our call to worship this morning? I will take the part of one, and I ask you to join me in the part of all. Watch and listen for the wonders of God. Our God is among us. Watch and listen for the goodness of our God. Our God moves among us. Watch and listen for God is here. Our God dwells among us. Amen. Would you join me in prayer this morning? God, the encourager. God, the compassionate. God, the merciful holy and blessed, disturb us. Rouse us from our sleep. Lift us into consciousness of your presence that surrounds us. Change us. Move us. Mold us for the better so that at the sound of your voice, at the call of our name, that we will never be the same. And may this worship, this time, do this and so much more. In the name of Jesus, we pray and all of God's children said, Amen. Would you join me this morning as we continue to worship? We join our voices in song.
pretty heaven, heavy burdens to carry in life. Perhaps you have a physical handicap that makes life difficult, or perhaps your father has lost his job and your family is having financial difficulties. Maybe someone in your family has cancer or some other serious illness and you're worried about them. You may have you may be having a hard time making a passing grade in school. I don't know what the burden is, uh, but do know that there are some that you just can't handle by yourself. Well, guess what? You don't have to. Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. There is no reason for you to struggle with burdens that are too heavy for you. God's word is full of promises to help us in times of trouble. Here are just a few. From Genesis 26, verse 24, don't be afraid, I am with you. From Psalm 28, verse 7, I'll give you strength. Psalm 34, verse 6, I am with you in times of trouble. These words of encouragement are just what we need to face hard times that come our way. Does that mean that if we ask God, God will take all of our troubles away? No, God will help us. In fact, some of our struggles may help us grow to become stronger. They may also help us to learn to trust in Jesus. But when the load is too heavy, God will help us to carry it. And there is no burden that is too heavy for God or Jesus. Can you play with me? Dear Lord, we are thankful that when we struggle under the load of life's burdens, you are there to help us carry the load. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. The scripture for today is from Romans 8, 35 through 39. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Trouble, calamity, persecution, hunger, nakedness, danger, violence? As scripture says, for your sake, we're being killed all day long. We're looked upon as sheep to be slaughtered. Yet in all this, we are more than conquerors because of God who has loved us. For I am certain that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, neither heights nor depths nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that comes to us in Christ Jesus, our Savior. Our second scripture is from 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 5. Blessed be Abba God, the God of our Savior Jesus Christ, the source of all mercies and the God of all consoling, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the same comforting that God has given us. For while the sufferings of Christ are abundantly ours, our comforting is just as abundant through Christ. So there's an urban legend that has gone around through the years that says that a thief stole Mr. Rogers' car and a few days later returned it with a note on the dash saying, I'm sorry, I didn't know that this was your car. There's different versions of this particular story that say that the thief, while looking through the contents of the car, found a script uh, from the show and realized it was Mr. Rogers' car. Or Another version of it says that there was a Daniel Tiger puppet in the trunk of the car. Another version says that the thief simply just saw on the news that night that Mr. Rogers' car was stolen and he saw a uh, description of the car and realized who it was. And, and so, you know, this kind-hearted thief just couldn't steal from Mr. Rogers. In some versions of the story, it's said that the thief even went as far as to clean and vacuum the car before returning it. The most extreme version says that the thief or the thieves, however many of them there were, had all but dismantled the car before reassembling it and driving it back to its original parking spot. Today we are wrapping up our final toast stick, our final faith lesson from Amy Hollingsworth's book, The Simple Faith of Mr. Rogers, kind of getting an inside scoop on Mr. Rogers' faith that was very personal to him from a very close friend. How appropriate is it that we end this series hearing what Fred would say about going through difficult times? Before preaching this series, all throughout this year, 2020, especially as COVID hit and then now as the racial tensions once again were fanned into flame, and all of the other things that 2020 has brought about with us, there's been times that I have thought and questioned, what would Fred say if he were here today? What would Fred have to say? What kind of perspective could we gain from his life? A few years ago, I watched the documentary, 
that came out in theaters about Fred's life, and it was aptly titled, Won't You Be My Neighbor? And in this documentary, it talked about Fred's 30-year career on television and all of the world events that had occurred over that span of time. Fred subtly addressed and spoke to, to many a difficult times in a way that seemed to calm and to comfort, even if it was just children. But looking back, adults, again, as we watch old shows of Mr. Rogers, there's something comforting and calming and peaceful about the words of this man. Through the years, Mr. Rogers helped his audience to cope with difficult times, with losses that leave us feeling vulnerable and, and fearful. And so this, this last toast stick is hearing what Fred would say about difficult times, about times of loss, times of pain, times of being abandoned and left alone, times of fear. We hear Fred's words on this topic, difficult times. It's been a difficult time, a difficult year for, for many of us. Through the years, Fred would say, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. Isn't that true? You will always find people who are helping. I remember when we lived in Texas, Hurricane Harvey came ashore and it spun, it sat and it spun almost like a washing machine cycle is the way that the news put it and just dumped inches and inches of rain. It was a record uh, for Texas and probably many other states of how much rainfall had come. And maybe you'll remember some of the news scenes. Houston was just drowned. People lost their homes in places that weren't even floodplains. It was, it was a, just an ugly scene. And I'll never forget seeing the news reports of all of the people that came from Louisiana. They were called the Cajun Navy. They brought their fishing boats. They brought whatever they had that would float. And, and even people from liberal California, you know, Texans don't like talking about Californians moving to Texas, but here we had uh, just a smattering of people from all around the country bringing their boats, bringing whatever they had to do rescues and to help the overwhelmed fire departments that were in the area. And so, uh, you know, isn't that true, though, when, 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 when times are difficult, that we ought to always look for the helpers. There's always going to be helpers around. Now, children who watched Fred, Fred's show probably wouldn't have picked up on some of the events that Fred was alluding to because he did address many of the difficult times that, uh, that occurred during the course of his show. He didn't shy away from addressing things like the assassinations of Robert Kennedy or Martin Luther King Jr. He talked about issues like the Iran hostage crisis, the Vietnam War, the Challenger shuttle explosion. He talked about race and civil rights and anything and everything in between. Fred's last episode aired on August 31st, 2001, just days before 9-11. Now, Fred had already filmed he had finished filming back in December of 2000, but right after the tragic events of 9-11, his producer came to him and said, we need you. The country needs to see you and hear your voice. What an amazing thing to have such a presence about you that in the aftermath of a tragedy, that, that he would be in such high demand that the country really needs you at this moment. And so the, the producer convinced Fred to come out with a series of public service announcements. And before filming these public service announcements, Fred said this, I just don't know what good these are going to do. You know, for all of the positivity and the, uh, the can-do attitude that we've seen from, from Fred Rogers over the last few weeks, you know, he was still a human being. He was still susceptible to whether it was negative feelings, uh, feelings of hopelessness, 
I don't know what, what good these are going to do, he said before filming those. Now, in one video, Fred spoke to a fragile nation and said, no matter what our particular job, especially in our world today, we are called to be takun olam. Takun olam means to be repairers of creation. It's a Hebrew phrase that refers to taking actions to repair the brokenness of the world, to be peacemakers through being good neighbors, being the helpers that Mr. Rogers' mother told him would always be there in difficult times. Amy shares the words of author and religion professor Gerald Sitzer from his book, A Grief Disguised. This is what Gerald writes, all people suffer loss. Being alive means suffering loss. There is no one that is walking around who has been unaffected by uh, the, the, the ways of this world, ways of brokenness and loss and hurt. No one is immune from what comes about, from being alive, from simply breathing. And that's what Gerald Sitzer says, that all people suffer loss. We're all broken. We all have something missing in our lives. We all have scars that we are dealing with. We all go through difficult times. And Gerald Sitzer himself, he was well acquainted with loss after losing his mom and his wife and his daughter in a single car accident in which the drunk driver who caused the accident walked away unharmed, and walked away free. Sitzer was well acquainted with what it's like to be hurt and to experience loss. And he writes, We live life as if it were a motion picture. Loss turns life into a snapshot. The movement stops. Everything freezes. That, my friends, is some shared space. We have all been there in moments where the movie of life turns into a snapshot, into a freeze frame of trying to collect our bearings and pick up the broken pieces of our life. I think of Alan Jackson's song, After 9-11, the words where he says, where he asks, where were you? When the world stopped turning that September day. Alan Jackson, very much like Sitzer, is talking about these moments in life that cause us to come to a standstill. Alan Jackson in that song was using the power of music to simply speak to the most common of human emotions, grief during loss, when it seems that our world comes to a complete stop. And when I say loss, I'm not just talking about loss of life. I'm talking about a loss of whatever it is that we hold near and dear to us. Fred told Amy that while loss in life is the great equalizer, in other words, it basically brings us all down to the same level. And it really connects us in our true humanity that we are all broken. He says, that while loss in life is the, that great equalizer, it also opens up doors for us to connect to others. Wow. And I know we've experienced that, where loss, any sort of loss, is really an open door for us to be able to connect to others. When Jesus gave his commandment, the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do, unto you. No doubt he was thinking of, there was an older proverb of the day that said, do not do unto others as you would not want them to do unto you. Now that seems harmless, but in Jesus, it's as though he saw the negative turn of this proverb, do not do unto others. He saw it as too passive. And so Amy writes, One of the principal ways that Fred implemented Jesus' command to do unto others 
was to acknowledge the pain and the suffering of his neighbor and then to act upon that awareness by reaching out and offering comfort. Fred saw an opportunity when there was difficult times and times of loss and pain and trial, an opportunity to put into practice to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Now, there was a difficult time in author Amy Hollingsworth's life where she had some serious health issues and uh, her whole family was just going through a really rough patch and she was very emotional. And it was during this time that Fred, being the good friend that he was, wrote a letter to Amy and her family. He offered soothing words and, you know, it, what, he, what he wrote in the letter didn't make the problems go away, but they acted as a source of strength and comfort for Amy and her family. And in this letter, Fred penned the words of Fra Giovanni, a 16th century priest. And in these words from Fra Giovanni, Fra had wrote this letter to his sister who was going through a particularly troubled time. This is what Giovanni writes. Everything we call a trial, a sorrow, or a duty. Believe me, that angel's hand is there. The gift is there. And the wonder of an over shadowing presence. The wonder of an overshadowing presence. He talks about an angel's hand being there with a gift for us in moments of trial and sorrow and duty. I'm reminded of the words of Catherine of Aragon, once the Queen of England, who said, None get to God but through trouble. None get to God but through trouble. That sounds kind of depressing. And I'm just, I just want to elaborate on that for just a moment. It's, it's not that God is not present until times of trouble. I don't think that's what Catherine was saying. And, and I don't even think Catherine was saying, and if, if she was, I will disagree with her, that, that God causes trouble so that we would turn to God. I, I don't think that's what Catherine is saying. I would say that often we are not looking for God until loss, until pain, until suffering. And oftentimes it's not until these tender moments of life that we come to understand that there is that there is a wonderful overshadowing presence who is with us. It's not always obvious, and it's not always the first thing that we experience. It's not like when we go through difficult times in life, the first thing that we're doing is praising God for presence and comfort and love. That's often not the first thing that we do, and that's okay. But if there's anything that opens our eyes to this overshadowing presence that Fra Giovanni talks about, it is the work and it's the presence of the helpers who will always be there in every moment of loss and difficulty and pain. It's going to be the presence and the comfort of the helpers around us who are participating in Takun Olam, in repairing creation that opens our eyes to this overshadowing presence of God's arms wrapping us so very tightly, comforting us, repairing us. After one of friends, after one of Fred's close friends had passed away, unexpectedly. He received a package in the mail from the wife of his deceased friend. And in this package was a handmade carving of a crucifix that his friend had made before he passed away. Fred, as he was holding this crucifix and thanking God for the life of his friend, he recounted, 
All I could think of as I looked at that gift was God. The source of all forgiveness and love. Rising from the tomb, waiting for all of us to recognize that love is stronger than anything. Stronger even than death. Indeed, as the Apostle Paul wrote, nothing, absolutely nothing, in all creation can separate us from the love that is in Jesus Christ. And so when we go out into our world and we love our neighbors, when we participate in Takun Olam, repairing creation, being good neighbors, being sacrificial and humble and gracious and generous, The love that we show to others is what heals our hearts and mends the broken places in our lives. And so, body of Christ, disciples, keep doing what you're doing. Keep loving and serving with all that you have, all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. God be glorified in our work in this world. It's in the name of God, our Creator, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Every week, we get to experience God's neighborhood and Christ being neighborly through the table. And we remember when we come to this table, the words that were said and the gifts that were given. When Jesus took up bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. And then he took the cup. And after giving thanks for it, he blessed it and he passed it to them, saying, This is the blood of the new covenant. For as often as you take of this bread and drink of this cup, give thanks for this and do this in remembrance of me.
I love the words of the Apostle Paul that were read in the scriptures this morning, that we have received comfort from God. And because we have received, we can give. Because God has been generous with us, we can be generous with others. We don't serve a stingy God. We don't serve a God who is tight fisted and holding on to things, afraid to lose. We serve a God who risked it all, who gave it all, and a God that simply asks that we give all of our heart and soul and mind and strength. So may we rededicate ourselves today to being people who are generous with our time and our talent and our treasure as we give our gifts here to First Christian Church, and also as we, just as Jesus was broken and given for the world, may we also be broken, may we also be given to the world with our gifts. So my friends, today I invite you to join me in this prayer as we dedicate ourselves to giving. Godliness with contentment is great gain. We bring nothing into this world. We take nothing out of it. We who call Jesus Lord devote ourselves to resisting greed, which plunges the human heart into ruin and pierces it with many griefs. We are determined to practice generosity with free hearts, fixing our hope on God and not the certainty of wealth. We desire to be rich in good deeds and willing to share all that we have, laying up for ourselves treasure that will not decay, but will shine in the age to come. May it be true of our community. Amen.
Say